moving on now to section 4.3, we're going to talk about the properties of logarithms. We discussed some pro basic properties of logarithms in section 4.2, but our focus here is going to be on three properties in particular called the product rule, the quotient rule, and the power rule. And I want to remind you that your exams are going to be uh, open note and open textbook. So you may just want to jot these properties down for when you go to take the exam to have those handy. So we're going to do some examples. First, let me just say that if you have the product, the log of a product is the sum of the logs. So in other words, you can separate this product here and then take the log of each individual term and add them together. Similarly, if you're taking the log and of a with base b of a quotient, then that becomes log base b of the numerator minus log base b of the denominator. And for power, if you're taking the log of something raised to a power, then you can take that power out front and multiply it by the log of your base. Um, when I say base, I mean what's underneath the exponent, not the base of the logarithm. Notice that the base of the logarithm does not change for these properties. So let's look at some examples to see how this works. And we're going to expand each logarithm and then simplify. I'm not going to use a calculator, so if I can't um, solve it, I'm just going to leave it. Here we have log base 8 of 13 times 7. Well, we can expand that to be log base 8 of 13 plus log base 8 of 7. So we've expanded it to a sum. Here we have another product. So this is log, and this is the common log because the base is not expressed here. We know, assume that it's 10, base 10. So we have log base 10 of 10,000 plus log of x. Now, log base 10 of 10,000, notice that 10,000 is just 10 to the fourth power, and so this is going to be 4. So we have 4 plus log x. Because remember, the log is the exponent. Here the base is 10. The exponent that gives us 10,000 is 4. And so since the log is the exponent, I'm just writing the exponent there, 4. Now here we have a quotient, and we have the natural log. So this becomes the natural log of e to the 4 minus the natural log of 8. And then this is a power. So by the power rule, I can bring that power out front. And also, you can just notice that the natural log and e are inverses of each other. So when I uh, take the composition, I'm just going to get 4. Here, we need to think of this natural log of the seventh root of x. Think of it as the natural log of x to the one seventh power. That's what the seventh root is in terms of exponents. It's one seventh. And by the power rule, I can bring that one seventh out front. And so I have something like this. Here, notice that we have base nine, and this is a product. So I'm going to say log base 9 of 9 plus log base 9 of x. I take that product and write it as the sum of logs. Notice I have 9 here and the base is 9, so the log is the exponent. What exponent on 9, if I have base 9, is going to give me 9? Well, that's just 1. So this whole expression here is 1 and log 9 of x. We're adding that. Okay. Here we have again a quotient. Whoops, that's supposed to be a 9. Okay, so we just take the difference now, because we have a quotient, we're going to take the difference of logs. This, of course, is 1, and then minus log 9 of x. Here, the base is not specified, but we have a power, 
So we know it's log b of x, and that power can come out front, so it's 7 times log b of x. Here we have a product and a power, but before I can reach that power, because the power is not on both x and y, it's simply on y itself, I need to separate this. So this is going to become log bx plus log by cubed, and now I can go ahead and bring that 3 out front, and it becomes log bx plus 3 log by.